Oh, so we're recording now? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, we've done model preparation. We've done priming models. We've done cleaning models. Now we're actually going to start painting models. We're going to start with the cultists. Start easy, something that everybody should be able to do pretty good and have a fun time with it. We're going to be using the, the artwork from the box as our inspirado, inspiration. It looks like they're surrounding like a campfire because the glow is coming from the bottom. I don't know if I'm gonna do that because I don't think you're gonna be like playing with your models around a little campfire or I don't know, maybe it's a summoning pit. I don't know what these cultists do in their free time. I'm gonna use an assembly line method and that's gonna save time. I think I'm gonna start with the flesh, uh, mainly because it, it's deeper than the cloak around his face. For flesh, my main two colors are gonna be Cadian flesh tone and Kislev flesh. The brush that I do the majority of my base work with is the Army Painter Wargamer Regiment. I like this one because it holds a lot of paint on the bristles. First things first, I can be kind of generous here because I'm going to paint over it, but I'm going to paint his face. Getting all in there, making sure it's all filled in. It's always better when you're doing a base coat to do thin, two thin coats than one large thick coat because it lets you see the details better. Get that arm. Now I'm moving on to the next model in the assembly line. It's usually good to mix a little bit of water with your brush. It helps the paint flow smoother. Get up here in his little, little chicken choker. I made that up. Another guy done. As you're painting your models, the ones that you just painted dry while you're working on the next one. That way when you're ready to go to the next color, you don't have to worry about it blending. There's some instances when that's not a good idea, like if you are doing wet blending. In that case, I would not use assembly line painting. And we got our base coat of flesh on. I'm feeling pretty happy. All right, so we got these three guys, flesh stone painted. Next, I think I'm gonna go in and build a little bit of layer. I'm going to move to my next coat of paint, the Kislev flesh. It's gonna add a little bit of definition before we do a wash. I'm going to switch over to a detail brush. It's actually not even a detail brush. It is the Citadel layer. It's got a thinner head than my Regiment War Paint brush. And the idea here is just to catch the raised surfaces of like his cheeks, his nose, and his chin. So I'm gonna come in at an angle. It just gives a little bit of detail there. I'm going to come over to his fingers. I'm going to draw a line down each finger. It's important to remember to turn the model and not your hand because I paint in general one direction with the brush. I generally turn the model before moving my hand. Time to move on to the next model. Oh, I found a spot that I missed. I'm glad I turned them upside down. We got our first two layers on our cultists. So next I'm going to move on to the cloak. It's got some warmer colors. There's almost like a red orange hue in the brown where you can see it glowing. So to emulate that kind of brown, I'm going to be playing with these four paints today. We got Citadel Base Rhinoxide, Citadel Base Dryad Bark, a layer Citadel of Deathclaw Brown. Sounds pretty fierce. And then another layer of Skag Brown. I'm gonna start with Rhinox Hide. It's a warm, dark brown color that I like to use for cloth. Get some onto my work brush. I'm back using the regiment. So this is real quick work. Just spreading this all over. I wanna be careful. I haven't painted the top of his head, so I'll hold the top of his head. Be careful underneath the arm. Don't want to get it on the hand. All right, flipping them around. So we're getting to the place we're almost done with the first model. 
All right, so after all that, you may be saying, well, you left out a part, Travis. You didn't, you didn't do inside his cloak where his skin meets his cloak. Well, I wanted to save that for last, and I'm going to use my finer detail brush, the medium layer by Citadel. And now I'm gonna go in and touch up that line. This, I want to hold my brush at an angle so that it is easy to apply the paint to the recesses. That's usually following the angle of the line. And just be really careful not to get it on his face. If you do, not too big a deal. You just go back and clean it up with your flesh tone again. Gonna just do this for all three models. Come into that recess and fill it in with the Rhinox hide color. We're gonna go for like a brass colored for his staff or his wand. Starting with the base of warp lock, bronze, hatchet, copper, and brass scorpion. Starting off with the warp lock bronze. Here, we're going to want to pay attention and really take care not to get it on his fingers. Right up to his fingers, but not on his fingers or his hand. I work my brush edge up to his hand and then draw the paint away and down his staff. I'm gonna repeat that on the top when I get there. And put it up to his thumb and draw the paint away. Ooh, I may have a new favorite paint. This is fun. Now make sure you get the edges. All right, so I think we're done with our base coats here. Oh. Should I do the mustache? I should do the mustache first. Yep, yeah, mustache is getting done. We're looking at our model, our cultist. You can see he has this awesome stash and he's got like, I don't know, it kind of looks like Dumb and Dumber bangs. You remember like, what's his name, Ace Ventura? Jim Carrey, his Dumb and Dumber hair. It looks like he's got some of that going on. It was Jim Carrey and what's his name? Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels, that's right. You got a mustache, come here, let me study it. For his mustache, I got Gawthorn Brown and Talarn Sand. Sorry, okay. Gorthor Brown. All right, so painting this mustache is gonna be difficult because it is very fine, or I mean, it's a bushy mustache on him, but to us, it's really tiny. I'm going to brace one hand on the other to get it steady and ever so lightly color in his lip tickler. All right, so we got the mustache, now I'm gonna get the hair, boom. There we go, all three of those guys are done. So we are officially done base coating the models. We have them all base coated, and we are going to move into the wash phase, and it's going to darken the recesses of the model. So we are going to be using Agrax Earthshade. With my shades, I like to use an older, thicker brush. Uh, Citadel does make some. Actually, this is a really old Citadel wash brush, but uh, I've had it a long time. It's done a lot of work for me. And I'm just going to put it all over the entire model. Some colors are going to obviously pop out more but by the time I'm done, all the recesses will stand out a little bit more. One done. Move on to the next guy. You can see automatically that his face pops out. You can see his eyeballs. Got a lot on this guy. And move on to our last guy. If you get too much, you can soak it up with your brush and move it around. Now this step takes a little bit longer because it's a wetter paint. You just gotta let these guys dry. All right, so we're back. The, uh, the wash has dried. We can actually see a little bit more detail in the models now. Now it's time to start going and layering over top of these details. I'm gonna start with the cloak and I'm going to use the small layer brush from Citadel Paints. I'm gonna use a one-to-one -one mixture of the Rhinox hide and the Dryad bark. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and paint the raised areas of the cloak. Be sure not to get it in the recesses. I'm not getting much contrast with this color. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and finish. Smooth out some of those spots where the wash puddled up underneath of the model. So I'm not getting as much contrast as I wanted there. I'm actually gonna switch over to a lighter color, Scrag Brown. This is gonna get that warm color that I saw on the picture. Mix it in with the Rhinox hide and this should get a much brighter color. Again, just touching the highlights. Yeah, that's coming out a lot better. The edge of his cloak here. When I'm getting the edge, I don't paint directly on it. I use the side of the brush to paint. Now I'm gonna come under here. Get the highlights on the top of this fold. So I've done the front of this model. I'm gonna set them aside, do the front of the next model and then come back in the assembly line and get the back. Now, what I'm doing by mixing is I'm creating more work because I'm gonna to have to do multiple layers, but it's gonna create a nice transition between that dark Rhinox hide up to a higher highlight of Scrag Brown. This is gonna be an in-between shade. So now that I got the front of every model done, it is time to go to the backs. And again, start up here on the top, because that's where the light's gonna be hidden. I'm just bring some lines down. Again, this is just layering, so on the more hue or pigment that you want in color, just apply more layers, and it'll brighten it up. So we got our first layer done. And you can see the details are coming out even more. Looks like he's got some shadows and some folds going on. And for the last touch, I am going to layer Scrag Brown without mixing it. And it's gonna be kind of a mix between edge highlighting and layering, but I'm just going to get just the right amount of paint. And you just wanna to touch up the very tops of some of the edges to identify where light is hitting the model. Some of these will be along the top of his cloak. So on the top portion here, and I'll bring a little line back, hit up over his arms, cause he's got some light coming down from above. And just get in the very top, get the outside edge here. And all it's really doing is giving you a little bit more contrast on a few specific areas. I'll set him aside and move on to the next one. You can see this one has uh, that extra edge highlighting. You can see the difference there. Got the fronts done on all the models. Now I'm moving back to the first one to go to the back of his cloak. Highlight some of this. I'm gonna get the hood, get a nice line along the bottom to differentiate between the hood and his shoulders. It's a big flat area here, so I don't mind getting a lot of this highlight on it. This side is a little bit more wrinkles in it, so I'll keep that wrinkled effect. Just showing some difference in what you can do. Just do the straight line down and over. I am done highlighting the robes. Now the robes are gonna stay this color, but I'm gonna go in and pick out the trim. I'm gonna start with the base coat Citadel Mephiston Red. I'm gonna stick with my small layer brush. And what I'm talking about the trim are these areas right here. And I'm working on just staying inside that line. He's got trim around the bottom of his cloak. That's a little bit thicker and easier. He's got his little shoe on the front, so be sure not to paint his shoe. Again, if you didn't want to, you wouldn't have to paint this. You could leave it. Be perfectly fine, it's your game. His belt's gonna match the lining. 
He's got the trim on the front of his cloak. Next, I'm gonna lighten it up some using Evil Sun Scarlet, and it's a layer color. It's a lighter red, and here it's edge highlighting, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna worry about getting full coverage. The idea is just to get a little bit to make it pop out. Just enough to really make that red shine through. So there is the red. Let's try yellow on the next guy. A big problem people have with yellow is that it's too transparent, but this Averland yellow does a really good job. So we're gonna start with Averland yellow, following the same steps that we did with the red. I think yellow might turn out to be a more contrast between the brown of his cloak. Might look a little better, brighter. I got this line a little bit too thick. So I'm gonna go back to my Rhinox hide and straighten it out some. Just go back and follow the recess. You may think it looks weird at first doing this kind of pickup work, but as it dries, it'll make it pop out even more. To highlight the yellow, I'm using Uriel. I'm having so much fun. Okay, for our purple trim, we are going to be using Nagaroth Knight and Slanish Gray. Slanish Gray is a very light color. All right, I'm gonna start on the back of them here and do these long lines for that barely shows that dark purple. Hopefully by the time we're done with the light purple, it'll pop out a little bit more. I wonder how long this video is gonna be when we're done. <laughs> oh man, I just noticed that around his head is trim also. Like around the hood of the cloak. Oh, yeah. So, I gotta get that to start on this guy and go back and do the others. Alright, so gone back, fixed all the hoods. Now it's time to highlight the purple. This is slanish gray. I'm gonna mix it a little bit with the other purple to make them match a little bit more. It gets this consistency when Slanish Gray is naturally this consistency. Time to do some edge highlighting here. Just a quick line down each side. All right, I think I'm gonna make his chain. It's not really a chain, it's like a string or a rope. Deathclaw Brown and then do a flayed one flesh Deathclaw Brown mix. I'm gonna make it look like twine. I'm gonna wanna get the very tip of my brush. I'm gonna start at the bottom and work up. I'm gonna try to highlight, edge highlight. New, new, new. All right, so he's got his rope on. I might go in and give this another wash over top of it. It's awfully bright. All right, so we got the three little necklace things there. Pew. I'm going back to Agrax Earthshade, and I'm gonna stick with the same small layer brush because I'm only gonna wanna apply the wash to where I just painted the necklace. And I'm just gonna follow that line. And it'll darken the necklace down some and add a nice dark line between the necklace and his cloak do that for each one and it doesn't take much. I'm gonna add in some shadow there, and some more shadow there, some under here. Yeah, shadow. His mustachio. I think I'm gonna go Deathclaw Brown. I'm afraid it's gonna look too much like flesh. It does not look like a natural hair color. That is for certain. We're gonna go back. Maybe Mix Deathclaw Brown with Rhinox Hide. That looks more natural. And I like to use Pallid Witch, Left, Witch Flesh for my eyeballs. Sometimes teeth, depending on what I'm painting. I go in and I paint the white of the eyeballs first, and then I'll do a pupil, and then depending upon the model, I might try to add an eyelid. And a lot of people panic over this. I will turn the model and figure out how to get that tip to just touch the eyeball. And I generally sometimes will do it upside down 
and it's just enough to get the paint onto the eyeball. The extra small artificer layer citadel brush. Let's see if that makes this easier. And you're like, well, his eyeballs look like they're huge, but we'll go in and clean this up. Right now, we're just getting the white on there. Go through all of our models. Did a much better job on that one, I think. And the last guy. I got my eyeballs painted white. Now we're gonna go in and add pupils. Now this is even more difficult because I gotta do a smaller dot than the white dot. But I'm gonna line up my brush and just get the tip on there until I can see black. Ooh, I got some. All right, I got one eyeball done. That guy looks a little bit better. So we got the white, the pupils painted. Now we gotta go get the eyes so they don't look so big and googly. And I'm gonna do that by using my Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of Scrag Brown just to give it like a darker eyelid appearance. It'll make the eyes look like they're sunken in some. I'm going to get on top of the eye for an eyelid and underneath the eye. Now I'm gonna go in with the Kislev Flesh and bring out some of those highlights on the nose and forehead. Bring out that nose, forehead, cheek. Go in, touch up some of these spots on his knuckles. Giving him like a pale skin tone is cool cause I expect coldest probably don't see the sunlight that often. So we got some faces with some eyeballs painted on there. We got their mustaches. But that'll take me along to finish up the model with the metal pieces being his rod and the pendant on his necklace. All right, so I'm gonna take the warp lock bronze and get the pendant on each one. Just the dab will do. I want it to show. Okay, once I got that, I'm gonna go through and do the rod one more time. Maybe not, it's not showing up too much, but where I did the wash over the rod, it got rid of some of the shine from the metal. So the idea is to make it shine again. We're gonna go to the hash nut copper and then finish off getting the raised areas this color. And we got one last color for metallic with brass scorpion. Well, there we got it. Three cultists ready to be used on your tabletop. I think I'm done, Josh.